What's up YouTube, Mr. Lime SC here, and today we're going to be talking about breakpoints and frames and how it all fits together. I know I've talked about this a lot in my guide videos, you've seen it when I've been playing, all of that stuff, and you might just have some confusion about it. So let's go ahead and dive in and try and explain this to you in a nice and easy way. The way that this game works, before I even do this, I'm going to do this, um, and yeah. The way that this game works is it works on 25 frames per second, okay? So Diablo 2 runs at 25 FPS, even with Resurrected on top of it, behind the seams, the base game is still running at 25 frames per second. This is just the ticks of the ticks of it, right? So every second, there's 25 frames or ticks that you need to think about. A breakpoint is the value at which a spell, attack, hit recovery, or any other animation becomes a frame faster. So when your faster cast rate or faster hit recovery or faster block rate or increased attack speed, whatever it is, when that percent crosses a certain number, you're, you're going to get your animation one frame, frame faster. And so in that 25 FPS, the 25 frames in that second, it'll take one less of those frames, okay? So, for instance, on the left side here, or on the right here of me, you can see this guide, and this these numbers aren't like real numbers for breakpoints, but it's just showing the general idea that at a certain point, an animation will take 16 frames, and then when you reach X percent, it'll suddenly take 15 frames. And at X plus 1, X plus 2, X plus 3 percent, all of that is still going to be the same until you reach that next breakpoint where it'll take 14 frames. So the scale is not every percent of faster cast rate or faster hit recovery or whatever that you add is going to improve you. It's literally only at those breakpoints that you will see a difference. All right? So I can show this for an example with this character, right? You can see how fast she's casting these fireballs. She's still casting at the same speed right now. Right? That added 10% more. But it didn't increase her breakpoint. But if I were to instead add 20% more, now I shoot one frame faster. If I then add even more FCR, now I'm up another frame, right? So the, every time that you increase your FCR, you're going to be increasing the speed at which you can cast, which is going to hit that next break point. But like I said, it's not always dependent on adding a single 10, P, 10 FCR or whatever it is. It's literally by getting to those break points. So what are these break points that you've been talking about? And I will link this sheet down below for you guys. Well, I'm glad you asked. So here is what it is, and it changes based on your character, and even for some characters, whether what sort of weapon they're using, um, if they're in a different form, uh, you know, all sorts of that stuff, right? Uh, One-handed swinging weapons, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's all sorts of variations for it. So the thing that you want to really focus on, I'm going to go ahead and hide this column. The thing that you really want to focus on is what is in this yellow. So here is where you can put the FCR for each character. This is the animation speed, which you don't really need to worry too much about. Um, and then this is the cast rate frames, hit recovery frames, and block rate frames. And then this is how much faster block rate percent you have, faster hit recovery percent you have, and faster cast rate percent that you have. And you can note that it changes per character and sometimes even the skills that the character uses or the form, the weapon it uses, the form that the character is in, a lot of these can have an effect. So if we go here and say, okay, let's say on my sorceress, I have 30% or let's say 20% FCR. I'm, I get 11 frames. So remember, it'll take 11 frames for her to complete her animation. Let's say I have 30. I still am at 11 frames. Let's say I have 36%. I'm still at 11 frames. It's literally not until 37% that I will move to 10 frames for her to do the animation. Now let's say that 
The next one, let's say I go, I'm at 37% and I get all the way up to 62%. You would think surely by adding on, how much is that? 25% magic find that we're going to in improve a frame? No, we do not. <laughs> we still are at 10 frames. It's not until 63 that you go down to nine frames for her casting right there. And then the next break point is at 105 to go to eight frames. You just have to know these numbers or of course, in all of my guides at the very front, I list, you can see down in the bottom right, where all of the breakpoints are. And then in all of my guides as well, up on Icy Vans and other places, I always list what the breakpoints are going to be at for each of the characters, right? So this is just a way to see what numbers you input and where you're going to get your different breakpoints. Um, and this could just be very helpful because like I say, if you're a sorceress and you're trying to decide between a piece of gear and you have 63 FCR, and you're trying to figure out, oh my God, and you make all these sacrifices to get to 93% FCR, it doesn't do anything for your character. You're still casting at nine frames per second. That extra 30% is literally worthless until it becomes 105%, at which point then you go to that eight break point, right? Now the same thing is for when you're recovering. So people say, what is faster hit recovery? This is when you take more than 1 12th of your life in a single hit. So if you get that, it's like a critical hit, essentially, right? Where it's like so much damage that your character goes into animation and has that recover. Where they're like, ugh. In that time, this is how long it takes for them to recover. So you can see, for instance, the sorceress is terrible at recovering. The druid is not great at recovering. The necro is not great at recovering. Um, but... Paladins are decent, barbs are decent, assassins are decent. These are better recovering characters and are going to have better frames for it. And you have to really remember, at a game that runs 25 FPS, 12 and a half FPS is half a second. So 15 FPS or 15 frames, sorry, 12 frames is half a second. So 15 frames is more than half a second to recover. And this is why a lot of people will go for, you know, higher uh, faster hit recovery on these characters. Um, and even like spirit itself gives you that 55 people go to 60 then to get to the eighth frame. And then even we'll go up, like I say, to the 86 to get that seven frames, because when you can drop those frames down, now it's like more a quarter of a second to recover. That's going to be a lot better because of course, any time in that hit recovery, if you take another big hit, you can get put into it again and you can just get kind of chain locked in that, right? So that's not very good. You definitely want to get hit recovery for that purpose right there. And so here's a way to kind of figure out the breakpoints there and calculate and see, oh, is this going to be good or not for that character? And lastly, for blocking, same idea, but this is almost even worse. And a lot of people say, why do you throw the shield out at the start, Mr. Llama? And it's because blocking takes frames as well. Whenever I block, there's that little bit of time where I get locked in an animation. And sometimes it's better to just take the hit, lose a little bit of life, as long as it's not a hit that puts me in faster hit recovery. So as long as I'm not put in hit recovery, I'd rather take a hit many times than have to block it because, you know, some characters like a necro or a druid, it's half a second that I get locked up. You know how easy it is to get locked as a druid early on when you're blocking over and over again? I mean, it's terrible. So a lot of times, uh, this is why very early in the game, not blocking can be even better uh, for your character right there. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but once again, this is where you can see by getting, you know, oh, okay, you got 40%, whatever. I mean, that's huge for the frames and stuff, right? 40%, oh, 11 frames to seven. So that stuff can be super helpful. And this will also show the benefit of Holy Shield and why Holy Shield is so good. It starts at two frames. And then what is it for 86? 86 to go to one frame. But you know, we need that. Two frames for blocking. So the Paladin is just a champion for blocking, which is why Holy Shield is so good and one of the best things. 
Now, something that many of you probably have noticed is, hey, Mr. Llama, you didn't put the IAS breakpoints. Where are those? Well, I'm glad you ask because those are an absolute nightmare. Um, it's very difficult to calculate the IAS. There's no just like set breakpoint where it's like, oh, when you hit this, then you're, at, then you're at the next frame. No, 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 no. It's a terrible calculation. And I will list this calculator down below for you guys so you can play around with it and see for yourself because um, this is the one that a lot of people use. But basically, you go through this and you say, okay, let me pick a character. I'm going to do the druid. Okay, am I a druid in werebear form or werewolf form? That's going to change it. What is the weapon that I'm using? Because every weapon is going to have a different speed that then is going to have its different breakpoints. All right, I've got a nout on. It's a one-handed swing weapon. How much IES is on the main weapon itself? Right? <laughs> What about the secondary weapon? Obviously, a barb would have that, not for this character. Weapon IAS in percent. Total IAS in percent. So, okay, now I've got I increased attack speed coming from other sources. Am I using any skills, right? Okay, maybe I'm using zeal because I could have a passion or something. Do I have fanaticism from a faith or a beast or anything? Uh, from a party member with me. What is the level of that? What is my level of werewolf? Do I have burst of speed on if I'm an assassin? What about my frenzy level? Holy freeze level? Any of that? And then you can click this and it'll give you a little IS table. It gives you kind of this basic thing. Don't even bother trying to like figure out all the... I mean, just come over and do the calculation. Um... And uh, that's the best way to go for IES because otherwise, like I say, there's just so many factors that it's just going to be terrible. Anyways, that's how you can kind of determine breakpoints. Like I say, that's going to be a pretty, uh, IES is going to be a weird thing and whatever. But otherwise, just go look, find the breakpoints for the characters like I have right there. They're on my guides. They're all over the internet, all sorts of places. Um, and that's going to be just find those breakpoints, either memorize them or just look at them whenever you're gearing up. And, uh, and then of course you can come over here and play around with this tool I have to say, okay, I've got, well, 70, how many frames is that? Does 90 improve it? 89? Nope. What about 99? Nope. Okay. Oh, I need 105 to hit this next one. Okay. You know, so that sort of stuff is just going to be really good, um, for you to play around with. So anyways, I hope that this helps. I hope that this improves it and improves a little bit of your knowledge because a lot of people, I just know, think 10% more FCR is always better. But once again, that's not the case. You, you know, So you want to really make sure that you're understanding it because Diablo 2 works in some funky ways. You know, It's an old game and it was built uh, in a little bit different way than some more modern games might have been. So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was useful. Peace, everybody.